You said Jesus, peace be upon him. According to the Quran, read 4158. Brother, God raised him up to himself, and God is almighty, all wise. Okay, where did Allah take Jesus? Uh, Allah took him up to himself. Okay, now, where is your Allah, according to the Quran? I believe he's on the throne. Okay, so Allah is above the seven and is on the throne, right? That's right. And you just said Allah took Jesus to himself. So you just admit Jesus is with Allah on the throne. What is your Jesus doing with Allah on the throne for 2,000 years? And if he's uh, there, why do you need to say peace be upon him? Does he need your peace? Yes, it's... Um, Wait, he needs your peace even though he's with Allah? No, but it's just... It's no! Just, it's just what we're saying. Okay, but who told you to say that? Can you show me in the Quran where it says, say to Jesus, peace be upon him? No, it doesn't say that in the Quran. But, um, so how but dare you, is... James, how dare you insult your Jesus, Isa, who's already with Allah on the throne. He couldn't be in any more perfect peace than in the state he is already. He doesn't need you to pray for his peace. He's in perfect peace with your God on the throne. Allah says in the Quran that he confers uh, blessings upon the Prophet. No, it doesn't say blessings. It says he prays for the so. Prophet. He prays for the Prophet, not blessings. But yeah, because your Prophet is dead and buried. He needs you to pray him out of hell. Jesus, we are told, is with Allah. Can you show me where it says your Prophet is with Allah? No. About Prophet Muhammad, it says to confer blessings on him. And since Jesus is also a prophet, we confer blessings. No, on him. that's not. That's a pathetic logic because your prophet needs you to pray for him because your prophet didn't know what was going to happen to him according to your Quran. He doesn't. He doesn't need us to pray for. Him. Yes, you do. Yes, he does. Go to chapter forty-six, verse nine, because your prophet didn't know what Allah was going to do with him. Okay, so say, I am not the first messenger ever sent, nor do I know what will happen to me or you. I only follow what is revealed to me, and I am only sent with a clear warning. Nor do I know what will happen to who? To to Muhammad. This is about Muhammad, but it, okay. it doesn't say anything about Can you show me where Jesus says, I don't know what's going to happen to me? No, uh, Jesus never said that. But your prophet says, I'm commanded to tell you, I don't know what Allah is going to do with me or you. I just follow what's inspired. So can you show me where in the Quran... Muhammad was inspired to tell you, hey, Jesus needs your prayers like I need your prayers. See, I need your prayers, and Jesus needs them too. No, there's no like, exactly. specific verse about Jesus. Exactly. But for this verse, how did, how did you get that um, this was about uh, Muhammad going to hell? or? I didn't, um, ask, I didn't say how did I get I said, does he say he doesn't know what's going to happen to him? Yeah, he doesn't and know then what's going to happen. And then when you go to 1971-72, it says everyone goes to hell. And only the God-fearing come out. There's none of you who will not pass over it. This is and it doesn't say pass over it. Wariduha means there's none of you who shall not enter into it. This is a decree your Lord must fulfill. Then we will deliver those who are devout, leaving the wrongdoers there on their knees. We're leaving the wrongdoers there where? In hell. Okay, so wait. When it says pass over it, that's the unbelievers and believers will pass over it. But if pass over it means you don't enter it, then how did the unbelievers end up there hobbling instead of Allah taking them out. And then it says, Allah will take out those who are God-fearing. So according to your Quran, everyone enters hell, the righteous and the wicked, only the God-fearing come out and the unbelievers stay there. Does that include your prophet? Yeah, that includes all prophets. Everyone no, it doesn't them. include all prophets. You just read Jesus is with Allah. Are you lying to me? No, but Jesus still needs to be judged according to the Quran. Not according to 4158. He's already with Allah. According to 1971-72, talking to your prophet and the people at that time. There's not one of you who will not enter hell. So does your prophet go to hell? I can't answer that. Yes, you can. And now, in light of that, your prophet needs your prayers because he doesn't know what Allah is going to do to him. And later on, Allah says, every one of you, you, Muhammad, the believers and unbelievers, you're all going into hell. And only the god finger are coming out. But your Quran says Jesus is with Allah. So unless your Allah is in hell, Jesus ain't going to hell. These verses could mean um, the Muslims that Allah was revealing the, the verses to, and it doesn't necessarily mean um, the Prophet because... No, he uh, didn't say necessarily not Muhammad. It says, not one of you. Who is he talking to? Muhammad and the contemporaries of Muhammad. Nice try, though. No, uh, uh, nice try. No, but, like, the, the context like suggests that it's talking about the people who deny the resurrection. No, it's not because it says he's going to bring out the God-fearing. Why are the God-fearing denying the, God, the resurrection? Read 72. Then we will... Deliver those who are devout, leaving the wrongdoers. Why would the, the devout need to be delivered if they're not in hell? And how can you say it's referring to those who deny the resurrection when the devout don't deny the resurrection, they believe it? That's right. Um, yeah. Exactly. Go to 69 of your Quran, 44 to 47. Had the messenger made up something in our name, we would have certainly seized him by his right hand and severed his aorta. Then, then what would his aorta? We would have certainly seized him by his right hand and severed his aorta. Okay. And none of you could have shielded him from us. Okay, so if Muhammad had made a lie, Allah would have cut off his aorta, right? Which is metaphorical means cause him to die a painful death, right? That's right. Now, according to your hadith, how did Muhammad die and what did he say? He died from old age. No, he didn't. According to your hadith, and I'm going to give them to you, Muhammad died 
from the effects of poison. When the Jewish woman fed him a poisoned piece of lamb, he had enough of it for the poison to linger in his body. And as he was dying, he says, Aisha, I feel my aorta being cut off from the poison of the lamb that the Jewish woman fed me. So the prophet, uh, peace be upon him, in his ailment in which he died, used to say, Oh, Aisha, I still feel the pain caused by the food. I ate a tiber. And at this time, I feel as if Why'd you stop? aorta has... has wait, wait, wait. Why'd sorry. you stop? Sorry, Read. I just... Uh, yeah, you got shocked. Yeah. Read it again. I feel what? I feel as if my aorta is being cut from that poison. So why did you tell me he died of old age when your hadith says he died a miserable, shameful, humiliating death, the death of an accursed dog? Because your Quran said if he was a liar, Allah would cut off his aorta. And according to your prophet, that's what happened to him. And you were stupid enough to follow this man and give up the real Jesus and the real word of God, the Bible. I feel sorry for you, man. Uh, as, um, as an atheist, but my, uh, my parents were Christians. And you broke your parents' hearts by becoming Muslim, huh? Uh, yeah. Oh, so you admit, at least you admit. Well, hopefully, if you're still honest and open, you're going to go back to Jesus, Muhammad's Lord and, and Judge, not a Savior. It's too late for him. I'm going to use your Quran to show you that Muhammad is a person not worth you following, and that even the Jesus of the Quran is better than Muhammad, even though I don't accept the Jesus of the Quran. Chapter 4, verse 24, Surah the Nisa 424. Read that for me. Also forbidden are married women, except female captives in your possession. This is God's commandment to you. Lawful to you are all beyond peace, as long as you seek them with your wealth and a legal marriage, not in fornication. Uh, give, give those you have consummated marriage with their due diaries. It is permissible to be mutually gracious regarding the said diary. Surely God is all-knowing, all-wise. Now you understand what this is. In verse 23, yeah. 24, it's telling you forbidden sexual relations, right? You're the one yeah, that you I, can't touch, right? Yeah. Um, uh, when I, uh, I I did read the whole um, Quran, like uh, this Ramadan, and when I got to like this verse, I understood it as um, as like a law, like uh, at its time, you know, that it's not um, it's what that that it's a commandment from from God to, to do to what the Muslims at the time, like at the time. Uh, where does it say at that time? So I mean, right now you can have sex with a married woman because it's only for that time. Uh, no, but no, but that's your uh, logic, was, James. No, but listen to before no, you. But, I'm not trying to cut you off. Re repeat okay. your logic to yourself. Notice what you just said. This okay. command was for the Muslims at that time. But in this command, it's telling Muslims at that time, you can't have sex with a married woman. So if you're now going to be honest, it's only for that time they couldn't have sex with a married woman. That means they can now? Uh, no, but but I, I'm just trying to say that um, this these verses, like um, specifically these, were, were given um, to the Prophet at the time when he moved to Medina. So that there's like... Um, so that means... Very, uh, okay, let's let's go your logic. So when it tells you don't have sex with, let's say, your wife's daughter, that was only for that time, so now I can have sex with my wife's daughter? No. So even though it's given at that time, it still applies to all Muslims until the end, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, good. Yes. So now read to me 424 one more time. The um, first part. Also forbidden are married women except the female captives in your position. Are you okay with that? Because I just gave you a link. Click on Sunan Abu Dawood. Read it for us. Why was this verse revealed to your prophet? Abu Said Al Qutri said, uh, the Apostle of Allah sent a military expedition to Atas on the occasion of the Battle of Hunayn. They met their enemy and fought with them. They defeated them and took them captives. Uh, some of the companions of the Apostle of Allah were reluctant to have relations with the female captives because of their pagan husbands. So Allah the Exalted sent out the Quranic verse, and all married women are forbidden unto you, save those captives whom your right hand possess. This is to say that they are lawful for them when they complete their waiting period. Yeah, meaning to see if they're not pregnant. So let me be very honest with me. Don't lie and put on a show. If the Muslims have a caliphate and then he says muslims let's attack the kuffar they come and attack your place where your father and mother are alive they take your mother captive according to this verse they can have sex with your mother are you okay with that um, no say it again no so are you okay that your prophet did it to other people's mothers and sisters and daughters at his time you're okay with that um, no okay and you became a muslim in light of this uh no i didn't know about this Okay, so now that you know how disgusting Muhammad is, when you're going to turn away and say, I made a mistake, I left the beautiful Jesus for this son of the devil. That's that's just the beginning of your problems. Go to chapter 65 of the Quran. I want you to read verses 1 to 3 just to start with. O Prophet, instruct the believers when you intend to divorce women, then divorce them with concern for their waiting period. And count now slow down so I can explain, you know. because the, the Imam obviously didn't explain this to you. A woman who's been divorced has to wait. It's called the waiting period before she can remarry. That's known as yeah. the idda. Now, don't lose your place in chapter 65 because I want you to go to chapter 33, verse 49 of the Quran. If you marry uh, believing women and then divorce them before you touch them, they will have no they will have no waiting period for you to come. 
So there is no waiting period, right? If you haven't had sex with them. Um, in in the translation I'm reading, it, it, it says if you marry believing women. Yeah, that's fine. We'll keep believing women. If I marry a believing woman, but I have not touched her and I divorce her, does she have a waiting period or she's free? Uh, no, she doesn't have a, a waiting period, period right? But yeah. then 65 versus one of three, what about those believing women that you did touch? Do they have to wait? Yes. Okay, good. Now go to 65 verse four. So as for your women, uh, as for your women past the age of menstruation, in case you do not know, their waiting period is three months. Okay, stop. And those Before, no, no, don't, don't go any further because you got to understand. If you have a woman that you're married and she's now menopause, she doesn't have periods. So how long should she wait? Three months, right? That's right. Yeah. But then read the next line slowly. And those who have not menstruated as well. Well, whoa, 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 whoa. you're telling me your Quran saying that Muslim men can marry girls who haven't even menstruated, haven't had their periods? Uh, yeah, I've, I've heard it. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And so please tell everyone you're okay with your God allowing men to marry minors, young girls, premature girls who haven't had periods, who haven't had their menstrual cycle, and have sex with men who will then be divorced for other men to sleep with. You're okay with that? This um, is in your Quran. No. This is for all ages until the end. It hasn't been abrogated. Uh, I don't know. So imagine you had a nine-year-old sister and a 30-year-old Muslim man wants to marry and have sex with her. And in Islam, Sharia, that's lawful. Are you okay with that? Uh, uh, no. You sure you're not okay with it? No. That, okay. What about, a, but, uh, what about a 54-year-old? A 54-year-old yeah, no. man marries your nine-year-old sister and has sex with her while she's playing with dolls. Uh, no, but... Uh, but but well, about, before you say but, are you okay with that? Uh, no, that, that's not right, but... Um, but what? So it's okay uh, for your Muhammad 54-year-old to sleep with nine-year-old Aisha. That's what you're going to say? No, I, I don't I don't believe that happened. I believe that she was set... Um, um, the age of maturity. You want to bet she's uh, not? She... There's not a single hadith in Bukhari, Muslim, Sunan Abu Dawood, Tabari, Ibn Kathir, Qurtubi, that says what you said. They all say she was nine. She hadn't had her period, which is why she was allowed to play with dolls. Please don't deceive yourself. And I'll give you but... the hadith if you want. Hadith after hadith after yeah, hadith. I, I understand that the, there's these um, Sahih hadiths, right? But... Um... Like uh, there, there's uh, scholars even today. Like um, uh, I don't want to. I don't okay, but names, give but me they, one scholar. Don't give me a 20th century or 21st century scholar who's humiliated by what your prophet did. Quote to me a single scholar from the 8th century, 9th century, 10th century, 11th century, 12th century, 13th century, 14th century that said Aisha wasn't nine years old when Muhammad mounted her. Um, I, I can't quote any right now, but... Uh, uh, let me give you an article where you can't because I'll tell you what Ibn Kathir just said. You know why? They were not living at a time where the kuffar were the majority and they had social media, so they could be honest because they didn't give a damn what others said they could kill them. But conveniently in the West, when the Muslims are numbered by unbelievers and media, oh, no, no, she was not. All of a sudden, she wasn't nine years old. Okay, well, let's see. Hold on. Okay, Ibn Kathir? Yeah. Okay. Do you get to that section? Yeah, I'm here. Do you see it says Yunus bin Buqayr? Yeah. Read it for us. Yunus uh, bin Bukair stated from Hisham in Orwa from his father who said a messenger of God uh, married Aisha three years after the death of Khadija. At that time of the contract, Aisha had been a had been a girl of six. When he married her, she was nine. How old? Nine. Okay, now read it. We'll keep reading. Okay, so the messenger of God died when Aisha was a girl of 18. So this tradition is considered a uh, uh, unique in this line, meaning it has a unique chain. But keep reading. Al Bukhari had uh, related from Ubaid bin Ismail, uh, from Abu Usama, from Hisham bin Urwa, from his father, who said Khadija died three years before the emigration of the Prophet. He allowed a couple of years or so to pass after that, and then he contracted marriage with Aisha when she was six, yeah. thereafter, consummating marriage with her when she was nine years old. What Urwa stated here is more subtle. Incomplete, as we mentioned above, but in its content, it must be judged as mutasil, uninterrupted, meaning that there is no flaw, no weakness. It is a perfect matin uh, story. But keep, keep going. Uh, his statement: He contracted marriage with Aisha when she was six. Thereafter, made marriage with her when she was nine. Is not disputed by anyone. Repeat that again. As well as, it's not disputed by anyone. Now, let me tell you when Ibn Kathir wrote this. He wrote this 700 years after the death of your prophet in the 14th century. And he says, no one, no Muslim scholar, no jurist, no Hadith scholar disputes this. And I'll finish it. And it's well established, uh, well established in the Sahih collections of traditions and elsewhere. So why do you yeah. Muslim scholars in the 21st century, it's a century, dispute this when Ibn Kathir, 700 years after death of your prophet, said nobody 
No Muslim scholar disputes this. So you guys trying to play games with us? Um, Keep reading. Finish uh, it. Keep reading. Okay, Keep sure. reading slowly. Keep reading. Uh, he consummated marriage with her during the second year following the emigration to Medina. His contracting marriage with her took place some three years after Khadija's death, though there's disagreement over this. Yep. Uh, the, the Hafiz ya Yaqub bin Sufyan stated Al Hajjaj related to us that Hamad related to him from Hisham bin Orwa, from his father from Aisha, who said, The messenger of God uh, contracted marriage with me after Khadija's death and before his emigration from Mecca when I was six years old. After we arrived in Medina, some women came to me while I was playing on a swing. My hair was like that of a boy. They dressed me up and put makeup on me, then took me to the messenger of God, and he consummated our marriage. I was a girl of nine. Are you okay with that? This is Aisha telling you, I had hair like a boy. I looked like a boy. I was playing on a swing, and then the messenger of God took me in, consummated marriage. Man, he had sex with me when I was nine. You're okay with that? Yep, I thought so. So here you have a religion that says... Men can marry girls who haven't had puberty and have sex with them and divorce them so other men can marry them. And then your prophet, who's 54 years old, had sex with a nine-year-old who's playing on swings, according to her testimony. But then it gets even worse. How old was Aisha when your prophet died? Uh, she was 18. So are you okay that your prophet left his wives, widows, Aisha was 18, never being able to marry ever again to have children because the Quran in chapter 33, verses 53 to 54 says that no one can marry any of the wives of Muhammad after his death. So not only did he take her when she's six and then have sex with her when she's nine, he then left her a widow at 18. She could never marry and have children and she lived way beyond her 50s and he left her in that condition. And you're okay with that? Convince us you're okay with that because you left the beautiful Jesus, the son of God who didn't rape anyone, who didn't sleep with any minor, whose apostles did not sleep with minors or take people captive and rape them. You left that Jesus for Muhammad. I just, I didn't believe that he was God. Why? Because you, you, you have every right to tell God what he can and cannot be? Really? Okay, now let's talk about Jesus and your Quran. Are you ready? Sure. Okay. Let's, since I already told about Muhammad, let's go to your Quran. Go to chapter 3, verse 42 of the Quran. So uh, 342? You have the Quran. Now we're going to talk about, now again, just for the record, James, I don't believe this is the real Jesus or the real Mary. But since you believe the Quran, you believe this is Mary and Jesus. That's fine. So we'll just go with it. Chapter 3, verse 42. I want you to read that for me. Okay. Um, and remember when the angel said, Oh Mary, surely God has selected you, purified you, and chosen you over all women of the world. Oh Mary, be devout to the Lord, prostrate yourself in prayer, and bow along with those who bow down. One more this time, read it. Read 342 one more time. Sure. Uh, and remember when the angel said, Oh Mary, surely God has selected you, purified you, and chosen you over all women of the world. He, wait, wait. Allah chose Mary and preferred her above all the women of the world? Uh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Now, that's. I have a question. Okay. You're aware that the only woman mentioned by name in the Quran is Mary, uh, Jesus' mother, Mary, right? That's it. You're aware that according to the Hadith, Sahih Muslim, Muhammad's mother is burning in hell, right? Uh, oh, you didn't know this? Uh, you didn't no, know this? No, sir. Okay, no. let me let me let me give you a Muslim admitting this, and I'll give you the hadith. I'm gonna give you a YouTube clip. Ask him. He is a Salafi Muslim scholar who answers questions online. I'm gonna play it for you, but first hold on. Uh, ask him Al Hakim. Well, I played it a couple weeks ago, and then I'm gonna give you the hadith from Sahih Muslim. Okay. Okay, well, let me just get it for you. So you can hear it from the horse's mouth. Okay. Okay, here you go. Let's get it. Okay, here it is. I'm gonna play it for you. Hold on. Why are the Prophet's parents in hell? Asim El Hakim put posted December 13, 2020. Let me get you the link and then I'm going to give you Sahih Muslim. I'm going to give you Sahih Muslim because he's going to quote Sahih Muslim. But first, let me get you the link so you don't think I'm making it up. So when I give you the link, click on it, but don't play it. I'm going to play it so people can hear it. Here it is. Okay. Click on that link so you know I'm not lying. All the links I gave you, save them and read them later in your comment. Okay. You see these links? Now click on the last one, but don't play it. Just pause okay, it. Sure. Okay. When it opens up, let me know. Yeah, it's open. Okay. Do you see the title? What does the title say? Read it for me. Uh, why are the prophet's parents in hell? And this is uh, a Jew Asim or a Christian? Al Hakim. Uh, this is um, I, I think he's a Muslim. Of course, Sheikh Asim Al Hakim. Now let's play him. Listen to him clearly. It's two. It's three minutes. Okay. Let's listen. Sure. I'm playing him. Fourth question is, why are the parents of the prophet Ali Sallam in hell? This question you do not ask me about. This question is something that. The Prophet himself, alayhi salatu wasalam, told us about 
And the hadith is a Sahih Imam Muslim. His father, a man came to him and said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, where is my father? So the Prophet said, your father is in hell. How did the Prophet know? Allahumma salli wa sallam alayhi. Because Allah told him. So the man did not feel well about the answer. The Prophet said to him, your father and my father are in hell. Wow. And in another hadith, the Prophet wept one day, alayhi salatu wasalam. So they asked him, why are you weeping? He said, I sought permission from Allah to seek forgiveness for my mother. And he denied me from seeking forgiveness for her, which means that in accordance to the ayah in Surah At-Tawbah, that the Prophet and the believers are not permitted to seek forgiveness for those who died on idol worshiping, even if they were next of kin. End of story. Now, this was the Prophet's fatwa, alayhi salatu wasalam, not mine. Not Sheikh X, Y, Z. It was from the Prophet himself. And it's not in a dubious book. It's in Sahih Al-Imam Muslim. Mm. The most authentic book alongside with the Bukhari after the Quran. So why this is not our issue or problem? Because this is from Allah Azza wa Jal. It's a revelation. You can say that maybe because the people of Mecca had the religion of Ibrahim. This is why they were performing Hajj, they were doing Tawaf, and they had the original religion of Ibrahim of worshiping Allah on Tawheed. And his son, Ismail, was their forefather. And there was the religion of Judaism and Christianity, which they had could have adopted anyone. So these religion of monotheism were there, but they failed to choose it. So those who failed to choose it would end up in hell. This might be a reason I don't know. What I know is, what the Prophet said to us, والسلام, we have to believe and comply, and Allah knows best. So are you okay that Muhammad, who you were deceived into thinking is the greatest man and the seal of the prophets, his mother and father are burning in hell? Um, I, I didn't know about this, but... Um, no, are you okay I, I with it now? I explain this. Are you okay with it now? Um, I don't know. Okay, now, I just gave you an article I wrote on this. You see it says Muhammad's family in hell? Uh, yeah. Click on it. Okay. And you're going to go to the hadith. In the hadith, I give you the link where you read it online. So the Christian, the Muslims say, Oh, Sam, he's a kafir. He's this and that. Don't trust him. God, Allah damn him. What I want you to do is you put Command F and you put Sahih Muslim and it's going to take you to the hadith. When you find it, let me know. Um, yeah, sure. There's, okay, you, yeah, I found it. Okay, okay, now click on the link where it says HTTPS colon sunnah.com. You see it? Yeah. Uh, what there's... Is, uh, there's many of those. Like, okay, but the one, the one, the one, the one you're gonna see, it's gonna say, it's gonna say, uh, uh, 36 chapter. The prophet asks his lord permission to visit the grave of his mother. Click, yeah, uh, keep going until you get there. Did you get there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, now I give you the link to sunnah.com where you read the hadith on the sunnah site, not my article, because someone say, oh, it's this article. He's lying. Click on that where it says https sunnah.com. Sure. Okay, what did it take you to? Uh, I'm at uh, sunnah.com, the book of prayers. Okay, you read books. it. Read the hadith. Sure. Uh, Abu Huraira reported the lost messenger as saying, I sought permission to beg forgiveness for my mother, but he did not grant it to me. I sought permission from him to visit her grave, and he granted it permission to me. Now you got it, right? So the sheikh wasn't lying. I'm not lying, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, so Muhammad's mother is burning in hell. Now go back to the article. Go back to the article. Okay, sure. When you get there, you're going to go to the hadith about his father. I'll tell you where it is. Let me just get there. You're going to keep scrolling till you get to, it says chapter 86. He who died with unbelief. When you get there, you'll okay. find it. You see it? Yeah, I see it. Click on the link, searchtruth.com. Click on it. Okay. See, okay, it opened up to search. This is a Muslim site that has Sahih Muslim. Read for me 0398. Sure. Um, Anas reported, uh, verily, a person said, Messenger of Allah, where is my father? He said, he is in the fire. When he turned away, he, the Holy Prophet, called him and said, Verily, my father and your father are in the fire. So are you okay that Muhammad's father is burning in hell and his mother is burning in hell, but Jesus' mother is the greatest woman that God created? Let me ask you another question. If Jesus is just an ordinary man like Muhammad, why is Jesus' mother the greatest woman, but Muhammad's mother is in hell and his father is in hell? What makes Mary so great if Jesus is simply a man? As you're thinking about that, since you're in the Quran, let's go now to chapter 19 of the Quran, Surah Maryam, a chapter named after Mary. All of this, the Muslims won't tell you. They're going to hide it from you to deceive you, which is why Satan duped you into following the son of the devil. I pray you come back to Jesus who loves you and died for you. 
Muhammad didn't die for anyone. He murdered people's children, whereas Jesus died for you. Go to chapter 19 of the Quran, and you left this beautiful Jesus who left heaven for you. And anyway, go to chapter 19 of the Quran when you get there. Let me know. Okay, yeah, I'm here. Read 16 to 19, verses 16 to 19. Chapter 19, read verses 16 to 19. Sure. Uh, and mentioned in the book, O Prophet, the story of Mary when she was, sorry, when she withdrew from her family to a place in the east speeding herself off from them. Then we sent to her our angel Gabriel appearing before her as a And by the way, it doesn't perfect. say angel Gabriel, but that's okay. I don't care about that. That's a mistranslation. Just let's say it's angel Gabriel. That's fine. Keep going. Okay, sure. Uh, appearing before her as a man perfectly formed. She appealed, I truly seek refuge in the most compassionate from you. So leave me alone if you are god fearing He responded, I am only a messenger from your Lord, sent to bless you with a pure son. Wait, Jesus she is what? Jesus is a pure son. And yet Muhammad in the Quran is a sinner whom Allah threatened to kill and disgrace. Do you know that? I, I don't believe Muhammad's sin. Okay, now I'm going to show you that you don't believe the Quran. Go to chapter 9, verse 43 of the Quran. Okay. Your, your Quran is your enemy, okay? Go to chapter 9, verse 43. Okay, sure. Um, I'm going to read 943. Uh, may God pardon you, O Prophet. Why pardon who? You give them wait, wait, wait. Pardon who? Uh, the Prophet. Why? Why does he need to be pardoned if he didn't sin? Can you show me where uh, the Quran says, May Allah forgive you, O Jesus? Yeah, I've, um, I've, read, I've read the Quran, and um, Dr. Qatar, who translated this Quran, um, actually leaves a footnote um, in one of the chapters. I'm not sure. But Before but, you uh, ask me the footnote, is Qatar... A messenger who received wahi from Jibreel? Uh, no, no. Okay, but, um, just so go with the verse. That the prof, no, the just go with the verse. Uh, brother in humanity, I know what they're going to tell you. I didn't care what they say. Why is your God saying to him, may God forgive you? Forgive him for what? It's just pardon you. Okay, pardon you for what? And it, as I said, like um, it could be for misjudgments that um, he, like, he could have... So then he's a, not a pure, is judgment. he? Like Jesus, right? Sorry, what's that? Then he's not pure like Jesus, right? Whether a mistake or a sin, I'm going to show you he committed a sin. But still, Jesus is pure, and God never said, I pardon you. But your prophet is impure who needs to be pardoned. Now go to chapter, well, forget chapter. Go to chapter 47, verse 19. 47, 19? Yes. yes. Okay, so this is 47, 19. Yes. So know well, O prophet, that there's no God worthy of worship except... Allah, and seek forgiveness for your shortcomings. Wait, why does Muhammad need to seek forgiveness for anything? Um, yeah, so there's a footnote here by Dr. Qatar. It says, Good. like other prophets, Muhammad was infallible of sin. The verse here refers to misjudgment. Such Where? As Where does the verse say misjudgment? Um, um, no, but um, he gives an example given in uh, chapter 80, verses yes. 1 to 10. If the prophet himself is urged to seek forgiveness, then the believers... Okay, are but that's going to backfire against you. Chapter 80 is about Muhammad frowning on a blind man to appease a rich man. And you're telling me that's not a sin? Can you show me where Jesus frowned on a blind man, ignored a blind man in order to make the rich Jews happy? Uh, no, Jesus never sinned. Okay, but my point is, the example that your katab, that you're following as if he's a messenger, buries Muhammad because in chapter 80... Verses 1 to 10. I know what he's referring to. It says, he frowned. Your prophet frowned on a blind man, made a blind man feel bad because your prophet was busy trying to appease a rich Arab, pagan, when a blind man came asking his advice. And you're okay with that? Um, yeah, I did read about that. And I did read that um, that uh, when when he uh, Muhammad did that, um, there was a whole uh, chapter. There's a whole story. Yeah, chapter 80. That's the one. Chapter 80, what Katab is referring to. So you're yes. okay. You're okay that your prophet frowned on a blind man, made him feel bad because he was busy trying to appease a rich Arab pagan. Just tell me you're okay. No, that's that's not okay. But Muhammad himself okay. said that he felt bad and 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 Allah oh, so it was a revealed sin. a surah about the blind man. Oh, so, so Allah revealed a surah showing that your prophet made a mistake by making a blind man feel like garbage, something Jesus never did. Thank you for admitting that. Yes, Allah revealed a surah um, okay. about the prophet's misjudgment. Just repeat it again because we're hearing you. You just admit to everyone, Muhammad frowned on a blind man, made a blind man feel so bad and worthless because your prophet was too busy trying to appease a rich Arab pagan to convert, and your God rebuked him for that misjudgment, whereas Jesus never made any blind man feel bad, but actually healed them according to your Quran. But Excellent. Is, you don't have to bring up like uh, Jesus. Like um, Yes, I do. Him, but I have to bring Jesus because Jesus, your Quran says, is pure, and unlike your prophet, he healed the blind man. He didn't make blind people feel like garbage. Go to chapter 3, verse 49. Okay. Sure. So unlike your Muhammad in the Quran, who made blind people feel like garbage, Jesus healed them. Go to chapter 3, verse 49. Okay, I'm going to read uh, 49. Um, and make him a messenger to the children of Israel to proclaim, I have come to you with a sign from your Lord. I will make for you a bird from clay, breathe into it, and it will become a real bird. 
by God's will. I will heal the blind and the leper and raise the I will heal who? Uh, the blind. And your prophet made a blind man cry. Okay, at least you admit that. I'm, I'm glad.